folks, the Filipina bee here. And today I'm going to explain an integral part of life in the Philippines. If you live in this country, you're going to be in one. And if you have a problem here, you're probably going to be calling the head of one. I'm talking about the barangay, which is the smallest local government unit in the Philippines, also called a barrio. The barangay consists of at least 50 families in one neighborhood or territory, which is governed by a captain who acts as a liaison between the national government and the citizens. So what is the purpose of the barangay? Why would you ever need to deal with the captain? Well, fortunately, we can find out because today I've got the pleasure of introducing you to a barangay official who can explain the whole situation. Let's meet Seth. All right, so thank you so much, Honorable Seth, for agreeing to be interviewed today. I know it can be really hard to get an interview with a government official, so I really appreciate your time. No problem. It's an honor also for me. To be <laughs> the part pleasure of is all mine. So <laughs> let's start with what's the purpose of the barangay? In terms of the barangay, we are the one who focusing the problems, issues, concern under the barangay jurisdiction. Okay, so meaning if there are disputes that can be handled in the barangay level, yeah. you guys handle those concerns? Yes, before it ah, came okay. from the higher part. So what's the structure of the barangay? So the barangay composed of the barangay chairman, mm -hmm. that's what we call the head, mm -hmm. and the barangay chairman have seven barangay officials. Okay. So it's also uniform all throughout the Philippines. It's the barangay captain and seven barangay officials. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, Seth, does the barangay have police officers? Yeah, we have a police officer. We compose uh, 13 police officers or what we call barangay tanods. That, okay. The 12 are the barangay tanods and the uh, one the, that what we call the chief tanod and He's the one who handled the other tanods. So, Seth, is it always 13 barangay tanods in each barangay? No, it, it's not. It depends on the budget of the barangay. If they can, if they can have more enough or uh, small tanods, so it depends on the barangay. So, is your barangay considered a big barangay? Honestly, it's considered a big barangay because from now on, we have more than 3,000 families covered by the barangay. So that's why we, we need more tunnels <laughs> to accommodate the issues of the barangay. I think 13 barangay tunnels, you know, yes. they're not, I, it's not it's enough. Just, it's just a, a, a small number. 3,000 families in yeah. the barangay. That were, I think for me, it's like a county already or a, I don't know. A, state <laughs> so because i remember before that there is a town in the west that there's only one resident there so here in the philippines we you know we are a big family so three thousand families more than three thousand more than three thousand in one covered. barangay yeah. so seth how are the barangay officials elected uh what we call the handwritten election so through election or voting that's, that's the, the process, process on okay. how the barangay official and barangay chairperson elected it you mentioned handwritten election, election yeah meaning you have to write, to write down, down the name of your favor candidates and, and then put it in a, in a ballot box. box so what about if the person can't write read and write they have a, a process in that case if the person is uh, what we call an illiterate they can she can write or she can read they have an assistant in that in the election process is this assistant provided by a third party that you know is not from the opposition or this guy because what if that assisting person would yes. just shade okay which one which candidate you want uh mr x oh, i'll just shade mr yeah, y because very good, i like mr a very y good questions <laughs> but they consider the assistant if they are close relatives ah uh, example, okay uh, a member of the family the candidates also have the the one who will in charge to look at the process if it is fairly or they have an 
what do you mean the shady cheating <laughs> process shady That's, process yeah. so the the candidates is is prepared to have an what we call the watcher ah they have watchers yeah i watch you <laughs> okay is it true that the philippines is known for vote buying <laughs> in terms of vote buying actually it's yeah it's it's hard to accept but it's common in the philippines mm-hmm. but sometimes vote, isn't it illegal though yeah it's illegal the vote buying is an illegal it's not good for the practice it's not a good practice but sometimes yeah. we can deny that it's happened I like his honesty because some some yeah. government officials was like, oh no, I don't, I don't we know. We can't deny it anymore because it's, it's so obvious. It's brutally yes. There, it's like yeah, I. But, but not all. Not all. Some are have their vote for their comes from their heart, not for the money. Yeah, because you have to elect the right people to the in the position. position. Okay, so Filipinos have large families and i'm sure they vote together let's say they have you know this clan has a like 200 members <laughs> so does it does it mean that the the their choice of candidate will have a bigger chance of winning uh, in terms of the chance yeah, yeah. The, 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 it's an advantage for the candidate to have a large family members because because the numbers will count if they have, a, as you said, 200 families members, mm-hmm. so they have an advantage. So, Seth, what are the responsibilities of the barangay officials to their people? We have a big responsibilities for the people. For the example, we we maintain peace and order, mm-hmm. uh, settling dispute of the people, what we call the VAUSI, the violence against women and children. Some are asking for the support of their children. Ah, so okay. All of, so that's all of that problem is we, we cater in the barangay. Okay, so when you mention about um, like an agreement from a battered wife, like from Bausi, like violence against yes. children, uh, women and children. and children. So meaning, is it like the battered wife can ask for a restraining order or something? Yeah, that's what we call the BPO, the Barangay Protection Order. Barangay protection, protection order. order. If the wife are requesting to the barangay for for her safety, so he he have the right to ask for the BPO, and the barangay will serve the BPO to the husband and that to protect the wife on on physical intention and and so on. So how how far? Like I know in the west maybe. 500 feet away, uh, you can't be around um, the person that issued the restraining order. So, how about this barangay protection order? How far is uh, it? And the BPO is uh, the cover of the BPO is is 10 meters from the location of the the wife. Okay, so 10 meters. What if the what if the husband can you know can measure and then, okay it's eleven meters okay you be actually can can he do uh, it's that? A, it's another term of, of violence. We can uh, okay. call it a verbal violence or verbal. Yeah. Uh, so he can't do that even if he measured more than a ten. Distance, no, yeah. if he's starting to harass yeah, the it's wife. It's another problem. Ah, uh, okay. But I like the term. He cannot penetrate the location of the wife. Yes, <laughs> because it's what we call the. The protection. So, Steph, your barangay police are they armed? Our barangay police are, they don't have a firearms. That what uh, they only have what what we call the baton. Okay, baton. That's the only thing that they will protect themselves. Okay, so that they can use for self defense, but yes. they're not armed with guns. Fire, or guns no. or knives or. Etc. But do they have handcuffs for? You know, people. Yeah, they uh, they have a uh, handcuff. So, which is higher in terms of authority, uh, Barangay Police or the PNP or the Philippine National Police? The PNP or the Philippine National Police, because they are under the city. So, the Barangay Police officials only handle the, the Barangay. The Barangay vicinity. Only. The Barangay vicinity. Okay, so if there's a crime, let's say I'm a citizen of this Barangay. Um, who I who am I gonna call? The Barangay Tanod or the PNP? Very good questions. So when we when 
we have a choice actually we will think the situation okay if, if the situation is you think that you need a quick response uh, so you refer to the barangay if there's um, an emergency it's best to call the barangay police instead of the PNP because yeah. especially they can... if it's not it's not a serious crime or it's not a very critical situation okay but they will respond quickly, quickly than, than the police due okay. to the distance okay so who are you gonna call barangay tanods <laughs> so yeah, because or, or the barangay officials barangay, the barangay officials captain. okay so if there's a problem just call your barangay officials or the barangay police officials right so Steph what are the most common complaints that you get uh, from the residents in your barangay the most common complaint that we cater the barangay is that what we call the chismis chismis yeah the chismis are between the neighborhood oh my god yeah chismis is like the national sport of the Philippines like people talk about I mean backstabbing each other yes early in the morning chismis like they, from they the great a group to have a chismis right so basically what you're saying is it is illegal to talk shite against your neighbor like basically you have to deal with it they have to report it like this this woman called me biatch and they yes, have you guys I mean, have to yeah correct they, it we consider it illegal here in the philippines because there's a law to protect the the image of the people so you don't have the right to to make uh, nonsense issues for the another person okay so it is illegal even if it's your opinion that you are this you are that you're a biatch you're a scammer you're this if they cannot just throw, I mean, call you names because it's illegal here in the Philippines to uh, call you names and it's like tarnishing your image. Yes, correct. Wow, talk Even about... Even through social media, when you do that in a social media, it's considered an illegal in the Philippines. Yeah, because it's considered cyberbullying and yeah. we have a law against that. Even if it's true and even if it's your opinion, you cannot just say, ah, oh, you're ugly or you're... You're this. Or beach. Basically, if you just call names, it's illegal in the Philippines. And the barangay officials have to settle, to handle, that. handle the situation. Oh my God. So what else? Elaborate. What other crazy stuff So we is also going on? have a common issue like uh, third party. Third party. Yeah, it's common in the Philippines. Even you, uh, you, are, you are in a relationship, but there's another person to... And you so, guys handle that too? Yes, that's <laughs> very funny, but it's true. Okay, third parties, regardless if you're married or not, just even boyfriend and girlfriend, yes. if there's a third party in the relationship and someone would report, and if there's a situation going on, you have to uh, dissolve the commotion if there's like a cat fight whatsoever yeah, so that, have you know have you encountered or witnessed a cat fight like girls pulling their yeah, hair we, each we other? witness in the barangay that sometimes we can ask for the help of the police because we can we can we can handle anymore especially if that if the girls are drunk or they are <laughs> unconscious so oh my god they they look like they are they don't know what are they doing Oh my God! It's not. It's like you guys are the the peace officers plus counselor or the therapist yes. because really cat fights. Oh my God! A good thing. Oh my God! If you have a long, long hair, hair yeah. Yeah, it to me. <laughs> mostly it happens when they are drunk. Okay, so cat fights, you know, happen whenever they're drunk. Yeah, because <laughs> okay, because here if you drink some alcohol, you. You I turn into you someone have a you're not. Self-confidence. <laughs> that some, somehow the alcohol can boost your confidence. That's why they can make a decision of having a cup. I think. Especially if you're drinking tuba. Yeah, the, the Filipino wine, the red the, wine. The red wine, red, red wine. So aside from cat fights, how about brawls, um, drunken brawls? You know, guys fighting with the machete. Oh, really? It's it's com it's also common in in the in a guy side because when we talk about girls they are fighting but when we talk about in a in the guy side 
they are, that's very dangerous because they are using a machete or any kind of deadly weapon. Okay, so how about um, stealing? I know it's very common, like stealing yeah. chickens or caribous. Is it common in yeah, the so barangay? Lately, we have a records that they are reported of uh, stealing a, a rooster for the cockfight. Oh, okay. They're yeah. very expensive. Because it's expensive. So yeah. that's why they enter in that kind of illegal. Yeah. Here, guys, when you steal a rooster that is intended for cockfighting, it's really a crime because it's like very valuable. Yes. Isn't it illegal to participate in cockfighting or you can get a permit to be allowed if to... If they have a permit, it can be considered as illegal. But when you ha when you made a cockfighting uh, outside the coliseum or you don't have a permit, so it's an illegal. So the police officer will conduct the raid. I know it is barbaric. I don't really like cockfighting. So Seth, what is the most dangerous call you ever received from a resident here in your barangay? The most dangerous call that we received in the barangay is during the cockfight and then there is a guy who got stabbed mm -hmm. by another person in order to revenge because he get lost in the in the gambling so basically this guy maybe he lost a bet from this other guy and then he got you know stabbed, stabbed. Yeah. someone got stabbed yeah. in the cockfight that's bloody not only chicken or not only roosters getting killed but also people during cockfights because they are very they're very it is like an intense sport for them but i don't consider it as a sport yeah because it's, that's, a, it's considered as a it's animal it's animal cruelty and it's gambling so basically yeah filipinos are very serious when it comes to cockfighting and someone got stabbed and that's yeah. one of the no, serious serious and, and some are even the family, they got have an argument. Even father and son, they use machete to slash their son. Oh God! That's very critical, mm. dangerous situation that we the barangay received. Family disputes, like father and son trying to kill each other. The, yes, using was it machete. The was it the father trying to slash the son? Yes. Uh, because of an argument. Wow, that's really serious because it's like murder. Well, it is murder. Wow, there's a lot of responsibility of the barangay officials. You know, we're very lucky if your barangay officials are very dedicated to responding to each, you know, emergency or anything just to make sure that the citizens are, you know, getting along, you know, it's peaceful and everything is in order. Yes, correct. And that's a very big responsibility for us as an barangay officials. Well, thank you so much, Honorable Staff, for your time. And I know it's very difficult to get an interview with a government official because you guys are always busy. And I know, guys, there's a lot of information to take in. And um, I hope you enjoyed our segment for today. And thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll be back in just a few days with something you least expect. Until then, folks. Just one last thing before you go. If you think about it, I'm kind of like your bartender, listening to your comments and questions, giving you advice when I can, and brewing up some intoxicating content for your enjoyment. The only thing I ask in return is a small tip in the form of a thumbs up on this video, subscribing to my channel, sharing this video with friends, and hitting the notification bell so you know when your next round has been poured. I promise, it'll only take 10 seconds to do, and your tip will make my day. You wouldn't want to shaft your bartender, would you? And for last call, why not enjoy some of my other videos too? See you real soon!